my experience, there are two main things or character traits or whatever you want to call them that either help you be successful in business or if you don't have them will surely help you on your way to failing. And the first step to overcoming them is knowing what they are. Number one is just straight up a lack of patience and a lack of the ability to stick it through once that initial emotional high fades and things get tough. And number two is focus on the short term of actually getting things done. You can see that those are kind of opposites, right? Some people are either way too patient and they want to stick it out for the long term and they have no short term speed or motivation to get things done. And some are completely opposite. They're like really fast at getting stuff done, but they have no ability to stick it out. And if you don't have both of those or at least a balance or whatever you want to call it, it is very hard to be successful in business, no matter how you define success. So let's talk about the first one, which is lack of consistency over a period of time. This is probably one of the most common ones that just causes people to give up, right? Because when you first start a business, what happens? Think about what happens when you first start a business. You are so excited and everything seems good. You maybe have heard the quotes about how business is hard and there's gonna be all these things and you just have to get up and roll with the punches, but most people, they don't actually like know what that means and don't know what it feels like when it comes. It's this idealized version of it versus what you actually feel and the discrepancy between those makes a lot of people quit. And so here's what this actually means. When you first start your business, like I said, you are going to feel an emotional high. If you are able to stay in your business in the same direction, moving in the right direction, the day after that emotion fades, you are way more likely to be successful. And there's actually some science behind this that I've talked about before, which is called the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is basically a graph that shows like when you start to get a little bit of experience, your confidence rockets up, and then as you get more experience, it kind of goes way down, and then it slowly comes back up, right? But you never actually reach that point. This axis is confidence, and this is experience, right? And so what happens to a lot of people is when they first start a business, they have all the excitement of just starting a business. Everybody's excited for them, all their family, like people they've told about are like, yeah, you can start a business. They like want to make this happen for a while and they have that excitement, right? And as they get a little more experience, their confidence goes up and they're even more excited. And maybe this is a three month period. I don't know how long it is, but either way, they experience this super big confidence high that's fueled by their emotion. Everything's good, right? And then you learn more and you realize things are harder. And the things you thought that would just solve themselves actually require a lot of effort, right? As you move through and you get more experience. And so what happens is you're confidence actually goes way down. And this point right here is where a lot of people quit. It's kind of been coined the valley of despair, right? Because you end up in despair during that period and you quit. But here's what actually happens. And this is why people, you see them jumping from one opportunity to the next opportunity because they get this far every time. And when they get in the valley of despair, which is closer to finding success and actually having experience, right? They're actually closer once they get to this point. They quit because what happens is while they're going through the Dunning-Kruger effect in the business they chose, they also, their mind is wandering to the other businesses they could start and they hear about something else, right? And while they're doing this, they start the other process of going through the Dunning-Kruger here and so it creates one like this, right? And so while they're at the lowest point of their current business, they're on their way to getting experience, but they're at the lowest point is when they become at the highest point of that other opportunity they've been eyeing. So they switch from industry to industry and this trend keeps continuing while they're at the lowest point in one business, the next business looks the easiest because they don't have experience and they don't realize that in order to make it in any business, you're going to have to go through this and make it out the other side. And so that leads them to quit. And you probably see that more than you see the other in society where people are just, they jump from one thing to another because the grass is always greener, right? I think that's who we're wired to be as people a little bit. We're always looking for something better, but you have to look for something better along the same pathway you've been following. Otherwise, you're just turning around, walking all the way back and restarting at step one. And it's very hard to get any momentum or progress if you can't stick to something. So number one is you have to be able to stick to something. But number two, and a lot of people actually have this as well, maybe they're able to stick to something, but they don't ever take those short term steps that they need to in order to actually be successful at it. Because if you pick something, walking down that path also counts and how fast you move down that path also counts. Standing at the beginning of the path going, I'm going to go there and then never taking a step towards it also is equally likely to cause you to fail. And as you get to watch other businesses and other business builders build their business, you'll see this where people who've been in the industry for years and haven't done anything. It's usually because they lack that short-term urgency and to be truthful and just kind of cut straight to the meat of it, most of the people we've worked with that seem to suffer from this are actually scared of getting to where they want to go because they think it's going to come with a lot of problems. And before you write that off as not you, I'd encourage you to think about this because here's how it looks for a lot of people. They know what they need to do. 
that big thing, the thing that they know they need to do more of, but they tell themselves they have to get all of this other stuff done first. Meaning they do the least important stuff before the most important stuff. And usually, maybe you know it or not, that's a hidden sign that you're just kind of scared of what's gonna happen when you do that thing you need to. Or maybe you're just scared of the thing you know you need to do, right? But either way, you put all this other stuff in front of you. Oh, I need to perfect my website. Oh, I need to build a portfolio. Oh, I need to upgrade my camera gear. All these excuses that at least in the photography industry are what we tell ourselves, that's what that looks like. And so. You have to have both of those and you have to be kind of consistent with both of those, right? Consistent about doing stuff in the short term, actually getting stuff done. Most people are absolute liars with this. They're like, oh, I do it. No, you don't do it. And so think about that. And I know that because I do that plenty of times in my business. And then the other side of it is you have to be willing to stick with it longer. So if you've never stuck with anything that you wanted to do, especially something big like starting a business for more than a year, I guarantee you have this problem. If you've tried more than two or three businesses, you have this problem. If you've thought about doing something else a lot of times, but never stuck with it long enough to do it, you have this problem. So try to identify which one of those you have and that's the first step. And step number two is actually figuring out how to identify which one of those you have, which is something you're gonna have to do. And then more importantly, the second part of step two is making sure that you put things in place of those weaknesses so that you don't succumb to them. Here's how we recommend doing that. There's two things. Number one is you have to have good reporting. You have to know how your business is doing and be able to see progress or lack of progress because that's what's gonna keep you going for that long term and help you get those short term goals down. So first thing we do when we start working with a coaching client is we put into place reporting for them. They track reporting weekly, monthly, and yearly. And so at any point we can go see a trend line, a literal graph of the progress of their business in the areas we care about. Some of those are obviously revenue, profit, a number of clients served, unique clients served, average order value, number of mistakes made. We can see the history in each of those categories and then that allows us to look into and be like, okay, nothing's moving here. Is that because we're not going in the right direction? Is that because we're going in a thousand different directions? Like what's the problem? So we're able to identify that, but we wouldn't be able to identify those things if we didn't have reporting in place. So number one is you have to have good reporting in place for your business. This is something obviously a lot of people say, but most businesses agree with and then don't do anything about. So get reporting in place. And here's why it's a problem if you don't have reporting in place. You obviously can't make a decision based upon data, but even more of a problem is you'll experience Experience what's called the recency effect and more importantly the negative emotions or actions that you'll take as a result of that and here's what the recency effect is basically in science it says that the most recent thing you've experienced that data or that experience is what your brain uses to predict the future so if you had a slow week your brain is going to start going, oh shoot, I need to go into scarcity mode because this is what just happened so my future looks slow. We actually had a coaching client go through this process really recently. There was like one week one thing and one week the other thing and so I'll share that story because it illustrates it perfectly. One week they were slow. Out of nowhere they just didn't have that many shoots. And the questions they started asking us were like, why do I not, you know, what's going on? I need to get more clients. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to afford my bills. I'm having cash flow issues because of one week, they weren't actually having any of this. It was just their brain started going, I'm going to, if something doesn't change, right? Based on one week of data. And so that was week one, it was scarcity week. You know, in week two, they had so many shoots, more than normal, and they didn't know what to do. And so they started thinking the opposite of scarcity. They started getting worried about there being too scarce a, ver a version of them, right? Like they didn't have enough of them. They're like, I have too many shoots, I can't do this. Do I need to hire somebody? And the funny part was, and I'll talk about goals in a second, their goal was actually not to scale. They did not want to scale, but the week was so busy that they started thinking, I have no choice but to scale. I have no choice, right? And so it was two weeks back to back that just showed how much the recency effect plays into things. And this is why it's so important to have reporting. Because when they had these concerns, we're able to look at the reporting and go, okay, that's not really what actually is happening. Let's look at things over the long term. Let's isolate this week as just a fluke. And last week as a fluke, funny enough, you average both weeks, it looks like an average week. So it's just the way business goes sometimes. We're able to look at that reporting to make a long-term decision. And so if you don't have reporting, you're gonna rubber band back and forth. And that rubber banding is gonna cause you to question your direction in a rapidly changing way, which is going to ultimately not let you make progress in one direction, maybe derail you. And then here's point number two, and another reason you need reporting, which is if step one to fixing this is having reporting, step two is having a goal, because if you don't know where you're going, it doesn't really matter what way you go and you can't really push in one direction. I'm a big fan of, and we do this for our coaching clients, we have one, three, six, and 12 month goals, and then longer than that, depending on what their like big goal is, whether they want to like hire people and grow a team or like make a bunch of money, like whatever their goal is, we have those goals and then those smaller goals. That that way we can track if they're moving in the right direction and actually compare that graph that we've done in their reporting and see if it matches up to what the person's goals are. And if not, we 
know we need to turn something up. If they're moving ahead of schedule, great. Maybe they should take a little time off if they're getting stressed. Like whatever it is, there's these balance. And without reporting, without goals, we're not able to determine that. And so I'd encourage you to think about, you know, maybe watch this whole video again if you're not sure which one you struggle with, but really isolate which one you struggle with and then put those two things, goals and reporting into place. And that will make your experience as a business owner so much easier. Like I've said, business is hard. It is not easy. And maybe there's times it feels easy, but there's also times where it feels harder than you could have expected. And so if you don't have this foundation of both the consistency and patience for the long-term goal and the speed of the short-term goal, you'll never get anywhere. And what was used to be something that was hard for a good end goal becomes something that was hard for a hard end, meaning you failed or quit your business or changed or whatever it was, you get stuck in this cycle. And so really do some thinking to figure out which one you are so that you can not be taken advantage of by it and ultimately put in the things you need to do to solve that. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.